Papa Drew, welcome into the channel. We got a Papa Drew review for you. We're going to be reviewing the Green Mountain Grill Davy Crockett portable smoker. We're going to go through three things we like and three things we don't like with a bonus at the end. The first thing that I really, really, really like about this grill, and we've had this smoker for a while now, and we've put it through the tests, I like how it's made. This thing is well made. It's made like a tank. How do I know? I used to be in tanks. This is a really well constructed piece of cooking equipment. Thumbs up for sure. They didn't skimp on how thick the metal is, the tinsel strength, the way that they thought things out to a certain extent is really, really well done. We'll go into some of that into more detail here in a second. The next thing I want to talk about is the size of this hopper. Oh yeah, you can put about a half bag of pellets in here. Now, we did a cook for 10 hours with this unit at 225 degrees, about 80 degree temperature outside, and I did not have to fill up the pellets. It only used about half of it. So I like the size of the hopper. It's really good. It holds a massive amount of pellets for being a true 100% portable smoker. This is an awesome feature. Well done, Green Mountain Grill. The next thing I want to talk to you about is the portability. I did a ton of research on other so-called portable smokers. I'm a hand model today. Portable smokers, and they're not portable. You have to spend three to $500 on the smoker itself and then go ahead and spend extra money on an inverter and then it's more gear to lug around you got to plug the inverter in you got to make sure the inverters not drawing too much power plus what the unit here draws it's they're just not true portable smokers look right into your battery you're good to go it's 12 volts anywhere you go you can plug this into your car and have a smoke on the side of the road or at your campsite or on your boat or your yacht for all you yachties out there this is a great piece of equipment that you want to take on the road with you here's the power supply right here for the 120 volt version plugs right into your wall you use the brick it's good to go now that I've told you a little bit about the pros, let me tell you a little bit about the cons. Things that, they're not deal breakers, but I wish Green Mountain Grill would maybe do a little bit better. Some of them I don't know how they would do better, but here they are. We're going to go over that right now. Number one, listen, if you want a true workout and you want to be Hans or Franz and pump you up get this because it's 70 pounds without the stuff in the hopper this is not a light girl she's a heavy piece of equipment why is it so heavy because it's made like a freaking tank i don't know how they would cut weight on this but it's a heavy heavy smoker for being 100 percent portable now it does come with handles that don't they flip up here and you can grab that um, I took the handles out just because it's sitting here permanently on my patio. Um, this is where I'm smoking from. The other one that's going into the RV, that has the handles and all that and, and the carrying bag and all that stuff. But it is a heavy, heavy smoker because it's so well made. I just want everybody to be aware of that. So if weight is a consideration, she weighs a lot. The next thing I want to talk about is... There is absolutely no way to empty this hopper. You just can't do it. There's no 
slide here to let the pellets come out. I don't know how hard that would be for Green Mountain Grill to fix, but the only way to get the pellets out of the hopper is the old-fashioned you a scoop -a. Get yourself a scoop and start scooping away and pouring it back into the bag. It would be nice to just pull up a lever or a door and just let the pellets fall out. Let gravity do some of your work, but it's not a deal breaker. It is kind of a pain in the butt, but you have to do the you a scoop -a method to get the pellets out of the hopper. Eh, okay. The next one, this is this is this could be the deal breaker for people. And, uh, and this is what I've experienced. This is brand new. We've had it for a couple months. We've done a ton of smokes on it. It was a a major problem and that was during Labor Day. On Sunday, we were into a 10-hour smoke. And it's true Wi-Fi. It'll communicate back to your phone or onto your network, which is, is really nice. I was in the house. I was monitoring the grill uh, while I was doing something inside, and I lost communications with the grill. I was like, oh, okay, so what's going on? Walk outside, the grill is shut off. Oh, well, this isn't good. This isn't going to help me cook my meat to make it more delicious for everybody to enjoy. There's a problem. We went and we checked to make sure that this, right here, to make sure that this was plugged in. It was. Huh. I made sure that the little light right here on the power supply was turned on. It was. So, get on the web. I go to Green Mountain Grill, their customer service. I call them up, I leave a message on Sunday, Labor Day weekend. I'm not expecting anybody to call back. We take the meat out of here, we put it in the oven, we continue our cook, and it was it was really good meat. I get a call back on Sunday, and they went through some troubleshooting methods with me on this cord. Does it push down? Yes. Is it out? Yes, everything was working the right way on the power cord. There was no power to the unit. So, so they just came out and they sent me a brand new control board. I put in the new control board following Green Mountain Grill's instructions. I still had a dead unit. This isn't going to work. Not by a long shot. This grill was very... This is the old power cord right here. This... It's the new power cord. I haven't even taken off the banding yet. What two things look different on these connectors? See how it's out more? The wings? What was going on was this wasn't making a good, solid connection inside of here. So I had to wiggle it just a little bit. Matter of fact, see how easy it just, you just barely push it and it goes in. Because these wings aren't out far enough to make a connection to the sidewall which was causing this to go on and off sporadically and it was hard to troubleshoot it. I got lucky and I was moving my brick back here and it went on and exactly I knew exactly what it was to troubleshoot it. So I called up Green Mountain Grill. Their tech support by the way is amazing. But you can learn a lot from a phone call and a conversation if you just listen. I told him what was going on and what they had already done. They'd sent out the control board, and the guy's first comment to me was, oh, I would have sent out the power cord. We have a lot of problems with the power cord. Oh, really? There's a lot of problems with the power cord. So, I don't know why they're sending out a lot of these with defective power cords, but apparently, because I listened to the conversation, that's what's going on that these wings aren't big enough. This is just a conversation I had with the guy. I don't know if it's widespread defectiveness with Green Mountain Grill or what, but it's something for you to take notice of. Green Mountain Grill did not sponsor this video. I bought all this stuff with my own money. This is my own money buying this equipment and reviewing it for you. So Green Mountain Grill has nothing to do with me telling the truth, and I'm gonna tell the truth. This power unit, these, these cords are defective. These clips aren't big enough. You need, they need to fix that. And they did. They sent out the new ones. 
Their customer service, like I said, was Johnny on the spot. They were really good, and within a couple days, I had the new cord. The, the thing that's kind of a problem is you spend three to 500 bucks, depending on your accessories, and the cord's not right, disappointing, and it shouldn't happen, right? They sent me out a thermal blanket to cover this, but it's still, that's not the point. When you wait for the grill for so long, you plug the grill in, you expect it to work. And when it doesn't work, it's kind of a letdown. Did they make it right? Absolutely. Did they stand behind their product? Yeah. Do I have anything to bitch about about that? Not at all. They did a great job. They did great customer service. And I really, really appreciate that. I just want everybody out there who's going to watch this video to be aware of these power cords and a potential problem. That's all. Now, for the bonus. I've done a lot of cooking on this. There's an inherent problem with the board, and I don't know if it just needs to be upgraded or what. But if you put your temperature, and this is really important, at 225, you are going to, not all the time, but sometimes periodically through the cook, you are going to get a major spike in your temperature. It's going to go from 225 up to maybe 350. And then slowly go back down. It'll stay at 225 for a long time. And then more pellets will come in from the hopper. And bam, that temperature is going to drop. Or it's going to spike back up again and it's going to drop. It's not a deal breaker. I get it. It's a portable unit. But I just want everybody to be aware of what actually is occurring in my grill that I own, that I bought with my own money. Not sponsored by Green Mountain Grill, by the way. That's the review. I want to know if you have one of these. If you enjoy it. I want to know in the comments below, let me know, please, if you could, like, share, subscribe this video, and let's get this information out there on the web. Thanks for watching, I love you, and I'll see you next time.